Are we? No. Are we broadcasting? Oh, we've even got four viewers. <laughs> Why does it say off air on my phone? Because you are off air on your okay, phone. Okay, well, I hope the audio is going to do. <laughs> Welcome to episode 62. Well, you aren't you muted? No. No. Okay. Say hello, everyone. It just stop us if we get too professional for you. <laughs> we were planning to have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were we were trying to do something a bit different yeah, this well, week, it's but clearly really, we're, we're we're just a couple of hard babies. <laughs> Speaking of which, our leader. Hang on a second. Right, so we're going to introduce you. Which is, you know, we've got quite a few interesting topics today on episode sixty-two of the Scottish yeah, Liberty Podcast with him, Anthony Samroff, and, and him, me, Uncle Tom Laird. Uncle Tom Laird. Well, it's a tale of two Toms today. Three toms, actually. Three toms, in yeah. fact. And I, I think you're going to like toms. it. We're, uh, this is the first time we've broadcast this late on since the Trump election. Mm. And we have the privilege of some uh, American guests joining to watch us live. So I hope you guys chirp in on the conversation this time. Yeah. Uh, I excuse us if you're listening on the podcast and the audio is a bit weak. Uh, one of the toms forgot to bring the microphone. So... Um, Anyway, yeah. So the leader, not uh, not of the uh, the the leader of the free world, Mr. Trump. The Donald, yeah. Performance review. How do you think he's done as president? Uh, as president, probably as bad uh, as I expected him to do. Um, but not much look, worse. Let's 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 get this straight. We were never. Uh, Trump supporters, really. No. I mean, that we're on record as saying that. Um, yeah. But uh, and we were we hoped, baffled. Maybe. We were we were perplexed by libertarians who had a real boner for the guy. Yeah, um, I could understand people saying he was the lesser of two evils, for example. Yeah. But I really could, uh, in the same way that I think in the Bush era, I could understand Democrats yeah. saying the Democrats were the lesser of two evils. Yeah. But if someone was passionately a Democrat. I thought they were mind controlled, and I thought if someone was passionately a Trump supporter, yeah. that they were a bit mind controlled. Did you have the same view? Yeah, uh, and I think that um, well, we, we we always thought he was he was a bit of a dick. But the, the good, the only good thing about him uh, for me was anybody who could annoy uh, the liberal left that much. You know, it's like I'm Margaret not, Thatcher. You know, any yeah. anybody who can really infuriate and incense the left that much is quality yeah, you know, that, that's, yeah. that's but it, and from my perspective not just the left I mean he really pissed off the neo oh yeah as he, well. absolutely that's worth and, mentioning yeah and I enjoyed I enjoyed his takedowns of the media and I enjoyed that when someone made fun of him he made fun of them worse and yeah. he got so much flack for all the wrong things like, mm. when he went after people who went after him, it was like, okay, well, fair enough. They threw down the gauntlet. Yeah. You know, why not? I thought it was funny. Yeah, they, they called down the thunder. They did. Yeah. And, and he just responded immaturely and kind. And this was meant to be some big affront. But I thought a lot of it was funny. I did think it was really funny when he said uh, about John McCain that he preferred people who weren't casual. <laughs> 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 You're not meant can, to can, say that. Consider, you know, from a man with no war record whatsoever, you know, that, that might be a good thing, you know, but to, to, to call out, uh, <laughs> Tom, to call out uh, John but, McCain. Um, uh, <laughs> But the warmonger, the warmonger, but he makes great chips. <laughs> Have you tried these oven chips? I don't know. If they, do they make McCain's oven chips in the States? Or uh, probably not. Together? It's probably fell uh, flat for anybody. Uh, but, uh, but trust me, if you live in the UK, that's fucking hilarious. Right. <laughs> so there's a lot of things to cover really regarding Trump. I mean, if it's true that the government that governs best governs least, then maybe he's governing best because so many of his things have been blocked by his opposition and his own party and in the Democrats. Yeah. It seems to me that he's done very little for someone who's been in for like 150 year, uh, days or whatever. Well, he's but, tried. I mean, he didn't right. fuck about. I mean, I'll give him that. When he first came, he, he tried to get things done immediately. I mean, he didn't right. hang about, uh, you know, enacting certain or trying to enact certain policies he's tried to get rid of Obamacare um, 
it, it just kind of shows to a degree how impotent uh, the President of the United States can be. Right. Um, the only thing he seems, the President of the United States seems to have free reign on is it's foreign going, policy, foreign and, policy. Going, and going to and war. And that's the one thing you don't yeah. want him to have uh, free reign on. So he bombed Syria. To yeah. the credit of uh, a lot of people on the alt-right who were big supporters, they did call him out on it, including colossal wa uh, warmonger Anne Coulter, which was pretty ironic. Um, this is, uh, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos is, was quoted saying something like, this is not what we elected daddy to do. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, now he's he's agreed to send more troops into Afghanistan, yeah. which he said he wouldn't do. He saber-rattled about Venezuela, saying uh, all options are on the table, including a military option. Yeah. He's, he threatens to take action on North Korea, and I was hoping... Now, I would really like to get Lou Rockwell on the show um, to talk about North Korea. So anyone listening, please email Lou Rockwell and tell him to make an appearance on the Scottish Liberty podcast. I've already emailed him. I've not heard back yet. He's a busy guy, yeah. but if a few of you email, then it'll, they'll hold more weight. It's a call out for Lou Rockwell. I want him to come on and talk about... This podcast needs you. Yeah. Due to due. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you due to due. Right, okay. Yeah. So, what, what, uh, no, so the, what does that mean? He's a Jew, you're a Jew. Does that make you, yeah, like, no, does that make you that mates? Like your brothers? Well, yeah, we've got know. a secret society. Right, okay. So, um, cabal. He's part, Trump, part of your cabal. What I wanted to add is Trump signed a bill allowing warrantless searches in three states. Okay. I'm just going to quickly... Uh, I don't know, uh, V-A-M-B-N-D-C, well, we know what D, uh, now, just in case you want to hear a, little, a few details in it, in performance duties, the commission, through its board or designated employees or agents, may enter upon WMATA rail system and upon reasonable notice and a finding by the chief executive officer that a needs exist upon any lands, waters and premises adjacent to the WMATA rail system, including without limitation property owned or occupied by the federal government for the purpose of making inspections, investigations, examinations, and testing as the commission may deem necessary to carry out the purposes of this MSC compact and such entry shall not be deemed a trespass. Okay, okay so this is just the, clear as mud. Mm -hmm. um, also, Trump's never been a civil libertarian. He said yeah. Edward Snowden should be hung as a traitor. Yeah. He came out in favor of torture mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff that most libertarians yeah. disagree with. He seems to be etching for have a go at North Korea. Right. Um, yeah. Now, we do have a caller. Um, all right. Uh, for, uh, all someone, right. <laughs> someone wants to call in, so... We'll, we'll see if he joins us. A B baby. A B baby. A B baby. Yep. Um, our first ever. But is he a tarred baby? <laughs> He's certainly not. He's a very bright young man. <laughs> okay. Now he is the leader of the Scottish Libertarian Students. Uh, so a, Trump so said he's going to get rid of the Department of Education. Yeah. I will. What What is the forfeit that I need to do if he gets rid of the dark? I will bet you he doesn't do You have that. to have a bacon sandwich. <laughs> do you think so? Okay. okay. <laughs> you don't think he's going to get rid of the... By the way, I, this, is not, this isn't anti-Semitic. No, hang on. Uh, yeah, it's exactly. Because, because he's a veggie. Um, I will have... If Trump... If Trump abolishes the Department of Education, I will eat a bacon sandwich live on the Scottish Liberty Podcast. Okay, there you go. Please, Trump, don't kill that... Wait... No, what? No, no, that puts me in the position of what of yeah. wanting to affect. But here's the thing, though. How does he? To do fuck you. Two things. First of all, even if he wants to abolish the, the the Department of Education, and I'm sure he's sincere about it. I mean, is he going to just face so much opposition? That. Yeah. Um, I think the woman that he's got in there. She says she wants to abolish it. She as wants well. to abolish it as well. Uh, I think he's. I, I cannot, it could only be a good thing if he actually achieves it, but whether or not um, he can do that is another matter. But here's my question. My question for all you 
Trump yes. trumpets and trumpists out there. What does the guy have to do before you say, I'm done with this guy? Okay, I mean, I'm talking to, I'm not talking to ardent uh, Republican or alt right Trump supporters. I'm talking to libertarians who've thrown their lot in and said, you know, uh, the Stephen Molinos of this world. What does Trump actually have to do before you would say, I'm done with this guy? Okay, how's that for a question? Yeah, and it would be nice to have some comments as well. Yeah. So, so, uh, tangentially, I want to go back to Charlottesville because those of you who follow the show regularly know that we've not done any live shows for a few weeks Mm. because we've been quite busy. Even it's been the festival. It has indeed. So, the head of the liberty. We'll come back to that in a minute, right? right? Trump came under fire in his speech after tra- Charlottesville and because he condemned the violent people on both sides and this yeah. was apparently he wouldn't, he wouldn't, shocking. Yeah, he wouldn't come out outright and just condemn uh, right. the alt-right or the, or the Nazis or whoever people say they yeah, were. And, but the, yeah, but the thing is he, he said there was violence on both sides, yeah. which is true. I mean, the yeah. Antifa have been, you know, being violent left, right and centre. Now, yeah. although I'm not a Trump supporter, uh, we were having a discussion about this and I wanted to repeat what I said because I was passionate and ardent. Mm. Uh, and I, I think that in this case, I think Trump really had nothing to gain by coming out and condemning Charlottesville because see the people who hate him, they're going to hate him no matter what he says. Yeah. So he's not going to risk uh, alienating anyone when if he came out in favor of universal health care and for tighter gun restrictions they'd still hate him mm. if he became the next incarnation of fdr lbg woodrow wilson and um the uh the guy that pres- jimmy carter yeah all rolled into one they'd still want him to try and push further and further to the left yeah. so this is the thing uh, they see any any concession on Trump's part is just a line that would get moved back yeah. and then it get moved back a bit further. And the thing is, with the leftists, a lot of them, I think that's how they see us as well. Yeah. So we should not be, and this is going to tie in with our next story, which is the libertarian social justice warriors. We have a... Cock a doodle dude of the week. We have cock a doodle doo. Cock a doodle doo. So it's going to be well. It's always controversial, but it's going to be a controversial one because this time our cock a doodle dude is in fact supposedly a libertarian. Is that a real libertarian? It's not a real libertarian. No, it's not Nicholas Sarwark. Mm. Is that how you pronounce it? Let me Nicholas see. Sar- Sarwark. Show me his, he is basically is he the chairman of He's the, the chairman. He's the chairman of the chairman of the board of the <laughs> of the board of the <laughs> boring of the Na- Libertarian National Committee. Yeah, so it's actually so it's Sarwark or Sarvark, and it's bad enough that he's kowtowing to political correctness, as Trump did not do and was correct not to do. I think so. And I'm allowed to say that after slagging off Trump for yeah, as long as I have. Absolutely. Um, basically, he went after Tom Woods and economist, Austrian economist Bob Murphy, who's basically done study guides for Mises and, and others, yeah. uh, basically for not signing a petition affirming they weren't Nazis or fascists or <laughs> sympathetic to alt-rightists, right? Yeah. And this is like, they're trying to win cheap political points, right? And for me, it's these people, they'd rather eat their own they would. That's why I call them libertarian Uncle Toms. Right. Right. Can you explain the popular culture reference of Uncle Toms? Yeah, an Uncle Tom. Well, it, it, Uncle Tom is it, usually in in racial terms. Uh, well, Thomas Sowell gets <laughs> called cool. an Uncle Tom. Really, does he? But, yeah, by by by. What black usually when a black person calls yeah. someone an Uncle Tom, they're saying they're basically they're trying to endear themselves to white society, basically. It, it, I think it's a little bit more than that. It's kind of like saying a race traitor, and it came yeah. from a, a play, Uncle Tom's Cabin, yeah. Yeah. which it was can, based yeah. on a novel. And I yeah. think the novel was quite anti-racist and anti-slavery. anti-slavery yeah. But the play that got yeah. toured around America was a corruption in the story in yeah. which Uncle Tom was 
betrayed as a buffoon. You know, I was going to say the N-word there. Uh, I don't want to get into trouble. Yeah. So I think these people are basically libertarian Uncle Toms. Mm. Rather than go and speak to the um, the left, go and challenge them on their so ideas, I'm say they're the trying to there. endear themselves uh, to... I'm just... Sorry, man. They're trying to endear themselves to the left. Yeah. And I think that... Hey, guys. Like, hey, hey, please, uh, I'm just going to finish my point, Abe, and then I'm looking forward to see you coming yeah, in sure. the discussion. But basically, I think they should be fighting. They should be making arguments and trying to address left-wing arguments and right-wing arguments against libertarianism. Instead, they're trying to endear themselves to people by being overly uh, politically correct and making concessions. Now, I'm not saying we should not show the compassionate face of libertarianism and try and sell people, <laughs> try and sell people on how libertarian policies will help the poor. Like, go to scottishlibertarians.com forward slash poverty and share the article that I wrote on how libertarianism would help the poor. But basically, I think these libertarians are more open to are more about trying to be perceived as good guys and endearing themselves to social justice warriors. And I don't think whatever concessions they make to political correctness are not going to help. They need to be standing up for free speech and push back and not try and suck up to people who will never like them. Yeah. They will never like them. They will never like them. Because they're fundamentally in favor of entitlements and you're not and they're fundamentally opposed to capitalism, and you're not. So you need to argue with them on those fundamental points. In fact, I think the more you try to make them like you by kowtowing to them, I think the more they'll despise you. Right. I'll just come across to them as feeble. So, so. Ibrahim. Good Hi, guys. You. Hey. Hi, Liberty Podcast wow. listeners. Really? Uh, where, where, where are you talking to us from? Uh, from Quoth Kwan. Quaff Quan. Which is Tell a wee village in the south of Scotland. All right, okay. okay. So you're not you're not in foreign claims then? No, I got back a couple of days ago. All right, cool. So what did you want to what did you want to light us all about? What did you want to school us on? What did you want to share with the, the libertarian community? I just wanted Go to say it. to to address the the point that a lot of people make that when people say, Oh well the reason we have this petition to to condemn uh to say libertarians are not fascists is because right. so many libertarians are joining and leaving and, and, and becoming alt-right. And while some of them are, the amount of libertarians that left libertarianism and left the Ron Paul movement to become Bernie Sanders supporters exceeds mm. that by, you know, orders of magnitude. And nobody's right. calling for a petition uh, saying libertarians must distinguish themselves from democratic socialists. Right. Right. I mean, I would hazard the guess that anybody who left the libertarian ranks to join either were never really libertarians in the first place. They just yeah, maybe sure. thought that Ron Paul was an anti-establishment figure, and yeah. that's what they were looking for. So, do you do what? So, do you think these uh, people, the guy who criticised Jeff Dice, the guys who are cri uh, criticising Tom Woods and Bob Murphy, Uncle Tom, are they are they libertarian Uncle Toms, or are they tra traitors to the cause? I don't think all of them are. I think some people are. I mean, if I want to name some names, I think Tom Palmer goes out of his way and a lot of the Cato people do, including the Cato vice president, whose name I've forgotten because he's so insignificant, saying that Ron Paul isn't a real libertarian. I think a lot of them have are nasty and are small and are just jealous, jealous that the, the Austrians did so much better than the middle yeah. of the road libertarians. But I think some of them, I think Nicholas Sarwark, the chairman of the Libertarian Party, I think a lot of them have good intentions and they see that libertarians aren't aren't making a strong enough case against the right and the, and the, that's that's causing some right wing people to to join libertarianism or, or and vice versa so i think some of them are honest and some of them are just jealous okay but don't you think that the alt right or even i mean like okay the alt right actually encompasses quite but but even let's call it uh, the the alt you know the, the white nationalist alt right don't you think it's a bit of a paper tiger Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, how many of yeah. them are there? There's about, uh, you know, a few hundred a uh, march, and then you get a bunch of people online trolling because it's fun to troll, but half the trolls don't actually believe believe in what they're saying. They just do it yeah. just to trigger anyone and everyone mm. because it's extremely fun. Mm. Right. So, the thing is, 
Uh, I mean, you were, ne- you were never a Trump supporter either, were you? No, I wasn't. No, I mean, I thought he was slightly better than Hillary, but yeah, but that was that was just uh, you know neither here nor there. Right. So the thing is, this thing about having good intentions, because this is something that's come up, right? Commun- being a communist is basically politically acceptable. Yeah, so wear a Che Guevara t-shirt is completely acceptable. If you wear a Mussolini or a Franco t-shirt, you'd be you'd be ex- um, ostracised from polite society. Well, well, check check this one out. BBC Radio 3 will be doing an evening of Tchaikovsky in celebration of the Russian Revolution. Wow. Yeah. Can, do, do you think maybe we'll have uh, an evening of Wagner where they'll celebrate... Uh, BBC Radio 3 will celebrate, you know, the Adolf Hitler's rise to yeah. power. Or, yeah. You know, yeah, it's just not happening, is it? You know, well, so. That was my joke. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's, it's a team. It's a team effort. It's a team effort. I write the material, he delivers <laughs> it. So. It's because you're delivering, you're the postman. I am. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> okay. And the postman is running away. <laughs> well, the thing is, here's the thing I don't really. Less and less do I consider people's intentions important because the consequences of a policy is not determined by intentions but by economics. So all these people who are calling for central planning basically, more communism, more government control of the um, economy, really even the only way, the only reason why they get um, away with it is apparently they're the good guys or they're nice, they just want to create a better society. Well, maybe that was uh, acceptable in 1917. Mm. Well, we've got a hundred years of evidence of what Central <laughs> Planet does to nations since then. Yeah. Therefore, it's no longer excusable. Even in the last 25 years, the evidence has come out of what capitalism has done for India and China. And people who are not looking at this and just ignoring it, you no longer have good intentions as a as a excuse yeah i would recommend anyone who who's sort of on the fence to watch a documentary by johan norberg where he goes to india and the and, and he shows that it, how since the 1980s since they started privatizing and uh, lowering tariffs and all that just how you know people have gone from from starvation to to, to living a normal life so i'd recommend yeah. anyone just just google johan norberg india and you'll find the documentary. Great. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that recommendation. Um, and I, I think we're going to go on to... Well, done. You, anything else you're desperate to share yeah. with us? Well, yeah, you're, can well, I you're... give a shout-out to my event? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Go for it. So on, the, on Saturday, the 16th of September, Scottish Libertarian Students, the organisation I run, are hosting a talk by Professor Jeremy Shearmuir, um, who uh, called... 40 Years of Libertarianism, A Personal Report, and it will be in the Cuckoo's Nest, func- the function room of the Cuckoo's Nest Bar, which is near the King's Theatre in Edinburgh, and it's at 5pm, so I'd encourage as many libertarians in Scotland yeah, to come. Just give us, a quick event, on the social event. give us a quick rundown on the speaker. Uh, he was a research assistant to the Austrian philosopher Karl Popper for eight years. He's written books on both Karl Popper and Friedrich Hayek, and he was around the London School of Economics both when both of them were, were teaching there. He's taught at Edinburgh University, the University of Manchester, Australian National University, and the Institute for Humane Studies at George Mason University, which also has a lot of uh, Austrian economists and other libertarians. George Mason is quite, uh, quite is known for its libertarian academics. Okay. And, and will this be available on YouTube for, uh, for our listeners later? Yeah, and, on, and it should be on SoundCloud as well. But I'm filming it. Well, as, if, as if that's not good enough, both, I think, both, and I, will you be there? I will be there. Okay, so there. Anthony and I will both so be there as well. From, so, yeah. so if you want to come over from the United States, you'll get to meet all three of us. Now, before you go, I'm sure that you you recently put a talk on YouTube, didn't you? You you, you uploaded a talk on YouTube with a, with a, a famous prominent yeah. libertarian recently, didn't you? Yeah, it sounds, sounds familiar. I think maybe a couple of days ago, Scottish libertarian students put on their YouTube channel a talk by some guy. Can't quite remember. I think, was, I, think, I, think, I think he was... I think he had long hair. I think he was a That's bit untidy. But apart from that, I can't remember much about him. Yeah, well, so, so if people wanted to find that talk <laughs> featuring an excellent uh, economist, uh, what would they ha- how would they find that and find your YouTube channel? Um, 
search uh, on YouTube. Uh, well, I mean, I would say go to our Facebook page, Scottish Libertarian Students, and it's one of the first links there. It's one of our most recent posts. Uh, alternatively, you can just go to YouTube and search Scottish Libertarian Students, or if you want the title of the video, it's Think Like an Economist, Anthony Zamorov. Think like an economist and and you can subscribe to their YouTube channel as well in case they put up more presentations. The dude's thank a you, bit British, man. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for joining us. Abe. Cheers, Abe. All right, and, have a nice day, guys. Good work. Man. We'll have you good on work again. on the top. See you. We've got one more story. One more story. Only one. Okay. Oh wait, for, before we go, Nicholas Sarwark, you are the Our cup -a -doon 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 of the week. Okay. So, I was and it was it was a close run thing because I was going to nominate Zoltan Istvan, uh, the libertarian guy from California, uh, for being into UBI. But oh, that's a controversial one with those libertarians yeah, as well. It's a controversial yeah, one. Okay. Some but amongst I, the I mean, here a, a libertarian called Zoltan. Right. I mean, it's not it's, the guy's name's not it his fault. Like I suppose the just, seriously, he seems like he should be the evil ruler of some galaxy yeah. somewhere, like that. Zoltan. But someone has to... Zoltan! Indeed. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, he does want to be... A, he is a transhumanist. He wants to go all cyborg, doesn't he? Yeah, I think He's he does want to get people. implants and chips in us to make us like the Borg. <laughs> right, so. well, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, I guess absolutely. it's a free country. <laughs> so, deplatforming of controversial and libertarian speakers mm. happening everywhere near you. Yeah. On YouTube, on PayPal, Jordan Peterson could not access some emails because his Google account yeah, is they're demonetizing. They're yeah. demonetizing. Do you want to say something about it? Yeah. Uh, and there's been a lot of indignance and there's been a lot of uh, flack coming from, quite rightly, coming from the libertarian community and the alt-right community. Uh, and in fairness, from some on the left as well, saying that, you know, this is... Uh, this 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 can't happen. You know, Google's basically a monopoly. You know, what, what do we do about this? And there's a lot of moaning and groaning and uh, so forth. But nobody's no well, very few people are coming up with workable solutions. What do we do? Where do we go from here? If YouTube uh, and even SoundCloud or whatever, you know, these mediums uh, decide to start clamping down on free speech, which is basically what it's about in the end. What do we do? What is plan B? What is the contingency plan? Uh, does anybody have any ideas? Uh, if, you, if this is something you feel confident to talk about, by all means, give us a shout and, yeah, and, and yeah. talk about it. Um, but, I mean, there's a few alternatives out there. I mean, you've, there's Vimeo for one. There's uh, Vidme. We've got, we now have our, our own channel on Vidme. Yeah, Scottish Liberty Podcast has a Vidme group. The, on terms of a blog, a lot of people have recommended minds.com. Um, there's the Daily Motion. There's a few of these things, but Ustream.tv. Yeah, there was Elo for a while to compete with uh, Facebook, or trying to compete with Facebook. So, in order to get off, wean ourselves off of these things, maybe even if it's even if it's not permanent, you know, even if it's enough to make YouTube. Or Facebook sit up and notice and go, hang on a minute, there's a drain here. Everybody's yeah. sodding off somewhere else and monetizing, and we're losing this revenue. Because that's really where you need to kick a private company where it hurts and its revenue stream. So, and by if, the way, before. And like, many of these guys, you know, like like uh, Molino yeah. and so forth, they, 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 they put a lot of money in. They've, they've made a lot of money for YouTube. So. What, how do we do it? How do we do this? What about, I mean, Lauren Southern, her Patreon yeah. got shut down. Yeah. Now, that can just floor someone whose income comes from that. Um, you know, it's just all of a sudden Sam Harris has decided to migrate to direct donations okay. because he just can't have, because he says something about Islam or something yeah. like that, um, Patreon suddenly demonetizes him and mm -hmm. he's like, oh, crap, what am I going to do? Yeah. So, and by the way, I don't mean to sound like Captain Obvious here or echo Uncle Tom, but seriously, I posted up what are the alternatives later on, and someone said, you know, a libertarian. There's always a fucking libertarian that goes, well, they're a private company. They're allowed to do it if they want. Yeah. Yes, I know they're allowed to do it if they want. I no know they're a private they, yeah. they, Yes, I get that. They are allowed. To, it doesn't mean you have to like it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 
Does we were having a conversation dead? about this yeah. the other day about boxing. Mm -hmm. I personally think it's degenerate. And he was like, it's, yeah, but it's voluntary. And I was like, yeah, I didn't say it should be banned, right? I just said I think it's degenerate, right? Okay. You don't like people taking drugs. You think yeah. that's degenerate. But that doesn't mean you believe that they shouldn't do it. No. Yeah, I don't have to approve of yeah. these companies being douchebags. Well, co Consequencia Liberal has tweeted, uh, tweeted what I'm talking about, is, is uh, gave a comment uh, saying the tw Twitter alternative, Gab.i AI, is better. And he also says that uh, YouTube alternative is betshoot.com. Bet is that shoot. a wind? Is that a I'm wind wondering up? if he's winding us. I up think it's These are actually like porn sites. <laughs> Betshoot. Like are you just sending us? Really? Is it? Come on, consequential are liberal. Are you for real there? Uh, there is a thing called betshoot. Is I'm it? Or, am I going to? While we're on air. Are we going to get some sort of anal sex? <laughs> 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 Which it wouldn't be a bad thing. I just it wouldn't. You know. If, Whatever, go for it. But um, yes, I mean, there was a famous, prominent libertarian that, well, libertarian-minded fellow who thought that anal sex should be punishable uh, by I don't know what. Was it Thomas Paine? It was Thomas Jefferson. Oh, Thomas Jefferson. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Paine would have been more appropriate. <laughs> Tom Ass. Tom, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man! This, we're this, shows the, I'm this, this about, shows the I'm talking yeah. about degeneracy. And look at the stuff we got to put out. So the reason why I kind of wanted to do a light show this week and just so really, but Thomas Jefferson was against bumming. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, both, uh, even within male and female sort of marriage. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He okay. thought it was. He should, thought it should be punishable, but I don't know why exactly. Um, but if anyone knows, <laughs> maybe he tried it once and <laughs> didn't like it. <laughs> but why is he trying to legislate his morality on other people? It's an interesting thing, you know. These people, uh, Thomas Jefferson, definitely um, was way ahead of his time as a thinker. James Madison, um, obviously, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have written the separation of church and state into the Constitution, which is very important to libertarians and people on the left. What I'd like, I just wanted to do a bit more of a light show this week because yeah. we've not done a, um, but just a, we've uh, not done a new show for a while, and I thought it'd be a quite. A good. Comment from Patrick Champman. He says, "I do think alternatives will arise." Bit shoot. He says, "And uh, consequential liberal says it's not porn." Um, he says, "Vid me and minds." Okay, vid. What concerns me with vid me is they have a similar policy to YouTube. If you read their policy, um, what do you call it? Their Terms conduct of conduct of policy, code, yeah. Code of Rose conduct. code of conduct. There's stuff in there that could eventually be used to shut down um, free speech just every bit as much as YouTube are doing at the moment. But I agree in the short term it's maybe a it's maybe worthwhile doing. Uh, as I say, we've got a VidMe account now. Uh, however, I think in order to, to monetize there's some weird thing where you've got to have fifty subscribers before you can uh, oh yeah, you can't upload anything over half an hour long unless you've got over 50 subscribers. I don't know, there's, there's oh, something like that on there. I had but. one more thing to say about deplatforming, just so okay. I should remember. Our friend uh, on Twitter, Zach Barr, was kind enough to tweet us to let us know that Fox News is off Sky. And so yeah. you could just about say that there's no mainstream conservative channel now. Uh, not that, do you know what, see under the Bush era, I hated Fox News, I thought they were yeah. just su such a mouthpiece for the yeah. worst and most vile opinions yeah. on every issue, they weren't, yeah. there was no issue that they were good on, they weren't okay. good on economics, yeah. they weren't good on foreign policy and they weren't good on um, civil liberties. But they did give a platform to like Judge Napolitano and Even John then, Stossel. Yeah I, think, yeah, I think John Stossel was a bit later on. Okay. Now, under Obama, obviously, they were the mainstream critical voice. They probably just painted themselves as sounding completely partisan. Although, you know, they did have left-wing people on their channel. You try and get some libertarians on CNN or something like that, it's not going to happen. Nowadays, I was kind of a bit more glad to have Fox News around just because everything has gone so progressive that there's no broad representation of opinion. And by the way, this is just to let you know, if people do get in touch with us and tweet us stuff, we do actually include it in the show. So don't be afraid to follow us on Twitter, or we try at Facebook, least. Yeah. and um, 
and things like that. You know, get in touch. We do try and include stuff that we're saying. So and share this shit. Yeah, please share our yeah. show. It doesn't have to be this episode, but find your favorite episodes and share them around because we've been hovering around the same number of, of views. And we appreciate them. Yeah, we, we really appreciate our them. Loyal, uh, uh, our since, since I've been on Tom Woods' show the first time, uh, we basically hovered around the same level of popularity. Our YouTube subscribers creep up. but um, And I think we do a good show. Do you know what I mean? I think we really do, do a good show. So please support us. And um, the, So the only mainstream critical channel is Russia Today, which is basically, which is was basically to the Russian government mm. what Fox News was to the American government under yeah. Bush. Very propagandist. I think they do a really good job on foreign policy. I think if we had Russia Today in the thousands, in the early thousands, when they were trying to sell the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, they would have had a much harder job of it. Mm. So I'm glad that Russia today exists, even if they are a bit lefty. Uh, at least they do bring a critical voice in. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what the solution is uh, to to our show. to YouTube and Google. This uh, is not fake news. No, uh, being uh, being a monopoly yeah. on 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 that kind of media. But I tell you what, I, I know what it isn't. Okay, uh, and it isn't this, but there's an opinion piece in the Gronyad, right? Uh, that's, the that, that's the Guardian. The, the, for those in America, it's the left, very left-leaning uh, paper. Yeah. Very for, progressive, let's say. They're, they're not out-and-out yeah. -out socialists. But no, they're, I mean, they, they support, I think they supported the war in Iraq, did they not? Did they? I think they did. Jeez, yeah, oh. I think they did. The only Jeez, paper oh. in the UK that was vocally against the war in Iraq was The Mirror. The Mirror. And yeah. they were a kind of right-wing paper. No, tabloid. The Mirror. The Mirror. No, very left. Very left. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So anyway, um, we need to... Na this is a, this is by a guy called Nick. Could it be Shrinichek? Shrinich uh, Nick Arsehole. <laughs> okay. I don't, in fairness, I don't know the guy, right? But anyway, he, he, I think he makes some good points, but it, his, his conclusion is madness. So he, basically what he's saying is... Um, I don't know if you can see that. You no, that's a oh, waste of time. We need to nationalize Google, Facebook, and Amazon. And here's why by Nick Srinicek. S R N I C E K. So check out his article on, uh, I'll see if I can on, share the, on the Guardian because it's it's not behind a paywall or anything. Um, so you can uh, you can access it. Um, but he starts saying, for the briefest moment in March 2014, Facebook's dominance looked under threat. Elo, amid much hype, presented itself as a non-corporate alternative to Facebook. According to the manifesto accompanying its public launch, Elo would never sell your data to third parties or rely on advertising to fund its service or require you to use your real name. Um, but he basically goes on to, I mean, I'm not going to read the whole article, I'll leave you to do that, but his basic conclusion is that, you know, as a result, we have witnessed the rise of increasingly formidable platform monopolies, Google, Facebook, Amazon. He has a go at Uber as well. Um, I love Uber, by the way. Yeah. And I've spoken oh, but, you know, to but, but, but Uber, the Uber are not reporting uh, sexual assaults to the police uh, that are taking place by their drivers. Hang on, surely if you're sexually assaulted by a Google, uh, a Google driver, by a... Uh, by an Uber driver, surely it's your job to go to the police with that and not actually Ubers, you know? But anyway. Um, this is the article, I'm sharing screens. Okay, so. cool. So, he makes some points that are, that are, uh, that are valid uh, about, you know, the, the, the power of these organizations. But let's have a, I mean, let's have a look at his solution. His solution to, to giant monopolies oh, is to make them an even bigger monopoly by putting them under state control. Are you insane? You know? Uh, they never think of that, do they? They're like, no. we need the government to save us from monopolies. The government is from as a monopoly. And, it, it, and this guy's a lecturer, in, sorry, is a lecturer in digital yeah, economy at King's College London and is the author of a book called Platform Capitalism. To what degree... Did companies like Google and Facebook receive state funds mm. or preferential treatment? Because is it like the radio airwaves, you know, where if you want permission to broadcast, you need to get it from the state? Yeah. Were they 
beefed up into the kind of monopolies they are by state funds. I'm almost certain that they were. I mean, who owns the internet? I mean, like, uh, um, what's his name? The, the, the British guy, T Berners, Tim Berners-Lee, is it? The guy who invented the internet, basically, and, and said, you know, I gift this to the world. So who, who should, nobody should control that stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's public domain and it's, you know, who gave Google this monopoly? Well, who helped better them? better than web crawler and Yahoo. Right. But was that enough? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The thing is, when it comes to innovators like, let's, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs and what have you, all of them were aided to ascent by the state. Yeah. But I'll bet you any money that even on a free market, they would be very, very successful people. Yeah. You know, it's not like they're parasites or anything like that. They have great benefactors of man. The people who created Facebook and Google are benefactors, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. I enjoyed YouTube when it first started. It, it was more of an easy playing. It was more of an even playing field. If you had a video, you could share it with all your contacts on YouTube, and they would share it with all their and I contacts. I think you could probably directly put um, the popularity of libertarianism and the popularity of people like Ron Paul down to uh, YouTube. Largely down to YouTube. Yes. So these are great things, but the thing is, the problem is the. They don't really have an incentive to optimize because they're not really up against anyone else. And it's going to be really inconvenient to have videos on several different sites. But that is not without a solution. What happens next is you get another site which converts videos from all the sites, which searches all the sites at once. Mm. You know, there's a company called Skyscanner that's based on in Scotland, which has been very successful. And what they do is you just type in where you want to fly, and they search all of the airline websites for the best deal for you. That would soon happen. So it's it's not impossible. It's not a really great problem if we move platforms in the long term. I would be sad to lose our YouTube sub subscribers and that's something that I worried about a lot more in the past than I do now when I had because I was putting out self-help media and personal development yeah. but there's no audience loyalty because back then people would just watch you on YouTube you'd get emails from YouTube and so forth whereas now it's all social media it's, it's Facebook it's Twitter the, the 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 content creator is no longer the star the video itself is now the star so you might do a good video and YouTube set it up that way at first, the content creator, it was easier to get your stuff out, it was easier to, to share it. And under the guise of under the guise of stopping spam, they made it harder and harder for you to share your videos. I don't think it was for that. I think it was because they wanted to direct eyes towards the kind of content that would make them the most ad revenue and was relatively uninfensive. That uh, PewDiePie guy. Oh yeah, that guy. I mean, that guy was huge. Why? Because he just did commentaries on video games and stuff like that. Like, who gives a fuck about mm. that? So it's not clearly a lot of people. Yeah, it's not. I mean, what I mean is, it doesn't get anyone's goal. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's inoffensive. Yeah. And if you think the only reason why PewDiePie was famous is down to sheer talent, I'm sure he's a very funny content creator. But YouTube pushed his video, it featured his videos, mm. it pushed eyes in his direction. And I worry about the power they have, because this is what the, the television used to do. Well, it was your only choice of information. Uh, it was report, you know, during the first Gulf War, yeah. the daughter of some uh, uh, Kuwaiti diplomat went on TV crying saying that the Iraqi forces came into Kuwait and went into hospitals and took babies out of incubators, stole the incubators and threw them on the floor. It turned around the whole thing was staged. Yeah. How would anyone find that out? How would anyone find that mm -hmm. out in the 90s? You, you couldn't find that out. Even if you said this is just war propaganda, no one would have any way of believing you. Yeah. Now, you, we don't want to see the internet go the same way. Yeah, that's the problem that we face. Yeah, so, and I think I mean there's there's a lot of big beasts out there, you know, like Molino, uh, 
I, he's I, done well. He's done very well. Well, he's done it, well since he's gone to the alt right. Yeah. He's or appealed to them. Or he's appealed of, to them. He's, yeah. he's, do you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, I've got a great admiration for Stefan Molyneux. Yeah. I don't agree with all his positions, especially not these days. But you know, he's worked really. He worked for ten years to get as big as he was. Is but I mean, what I've said that there should be a bit of leadership, maybe from guys like that who can say, "Well, look, let's create an alternative platform here. Mm. Let, let, let's do that." Um, even if it is just for all the alt writers to start with, as long as, long as it's something that, that kind of breaks up the monopoly. Um, I mean, apparently Paul Joseph Watson hasn't posted anything on YouTube for for yonks. Yeah, um, he, he made the statement that he was he was he was leaving YouTube, and I haven't seen him do anything since. Maybe somebody could enlighten me. Maybe he has. Uh, whether he sticks to it, I don't know. What he's doing, how he's. Oh, well, I guess he's got his Infowars mm. stuff, so he'll do it through that. Um, but yeah, we we need to find new platforms, new alternatives, new innovators who can come up with something that can bypass this and mm. can make YouTube. I mean, I know YouTube or uh, Google rather are facing same thing, but are facing some sort of uh, investigation in America for non-compliance to uh, federal laws and stuff like that. So I guess what they're doing is making uh, making a point to show that they're cleaning house. All right, what was it they used to call a um, kill a chicken to scare the monkeys? Yeah, like, yeah. Like you, and, and with the sacking of, the, of, of that guy for his, uh, for I've, what I've thought was a highly intelligent um, critique of what was going on in, in Google. I mean, most of the people who, who slagged that guy off, um, I, I don't believe they've actually read his, his email. You know, he didn't say anything in that that was not um, that was not backed up by some facts and evidence. Mm. You know, but oh, but you can't say that. Doesn't matter that it might be true. You just can't say it, and that really bugs. Um, and I think Google were dicks for sacking them. Um, but there you go. Yes. They are a private company. Yes, they're allowed to sack whoever they, they want for whatever them. reason they like, but they're still dicks. Yeah, for sure. So, so I've enjoyed it today. Let's see if there's any more comments. And I want to know, we hardly get uh, that much feedback from you guys on content, but some of you are very loyal. Do you prefer shows like this that are more chatty? Do you prefer the shows that are more based on economics and informative? Do you like the mix? Would you like a bit of both in each show? You know, we, we do a lot of different kinds of shows. The ones that I tend to want to share the most are the ones that are most informative myself. But we really enjoy doing these chatty ones as well. Yeah. So Helicopter Pad uh, says uh, Pauline Josephine Twatson and Stefan Molly Dew are cunts. Okay, <laughs> thanks for With that. that no. uh, uh, and uh, and consequentially, liberal finishes on. If you want to get views and subscriptions, put PewDiePie name in the title of your of your video. And this is a thing. The the okay. way I want to talk a little bit more about YouTube, actually, before we wrap up, because I was on YouTube ten years ago, almost probably ten years ago, and it was great uh, in those early days. I mean, YouTube must be growing exponential it must have grown more in the last three years than it's grown its whole career but back then you could put you could make a video response to someone else's video obviously back then now sound quality and video quality is really important yeah. whereas back then the technology wasn't so far along so if people were just doing a wee video blog content really was king people cared more about whether you had something insightful to say than if you had the best camera and microphone. Um, and there was a sense of community and people, people, it was easier for people to share and it was easier for you to rise on the rankings. Whereas now, not just because there's more users, although that's part of that, but because it's really, really difficult to get in front of the eyes of anyone. The only chance we really have is if they start putting us in the recommended videos in the sidebar. And you don't really get that kind of especially not for slagging promotion. them off. <laughs> yeah, you don't get that kind of promotion until you've got thousands and thousands yeah. of views. So I do love YouTube. They are benefactors. I hope they don't continue to deplatform or demonetize people who are 
uh, putting out controversial views because you need to turn over the soil. Now, if we didn't live in a democracy where everyone has to participate in politics, you know, maybe we would save a lot of time. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying what's preferable, but the thing is, because everyone needs to be involved, all of the information needs to be out there. Yeah. You know what uh, Oscar Wilde said: the problem with socialism is it would take too many evenings. And of course, by the by, by socialism back then, he meant you know democracy. Yeah. Uh, Riley Blake says, "I like the mixed shows, and there's something for everyone." Also, could you do a show on how libertarianism is better for people with disabilities? Hmm. Now that would be a challenging topic, but we'll definitely have a thought on it. Yeah. And, and and tell us, Riley, if you'd like to to call in during that yeah, show. Yeah, if you know anybody who has um, disabilities in the libertarian, I believe that uh, Riley might, might have one. Well, okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, so I don't know if I should have announced that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Riley is the host of Anarcho Agenda which must be a great show because he's had us yeah, as absolutely. a guest on yeah. it. So <laughs> check out Anarcho Agenda. And um, anything more? That's it for this week. That's it for this week. So be libertarians. Yeah. Don't, don't be, be a lefty or a righty or a social justice warrior or an alt right or, or a trumpet or a conservative or a conservative. Just a libertarian. Just a libertarian. <laughs>